Okay, so our presentation today, uh, we just wanted to do a little collaboration uh, with the museum that's here in Boise, Idaho, and with our friends that are down in South America and in Argentina. Um, it's something I didn't realize until really last year when we were all in this Gusto Mundo program that's sponsored by uh, the Basque government and we were there and I didn't realize how much I didn't know about the Basque diaspora that's in the rest of the world. Um, I knew a fair amount about what's going on in North America, but I knew nothing about South America. And then the more people I met and the more I heard, um, we realized that there's a lot of similarities and there's a lot of differences too about what that Basque community looks like in these two different um, regions. And both North America and South America have a pretty uh, robust Basque diaspora and uh, they do different things. And so I thought, why not get together with some of our colleagues from this Gaussian Mundo program and talk about it and see what it's like. And um, hopefully it'll be really informative if you're joining us from uh, Argentina or South America and also if you're joining us from uh, the US or North America. So uh, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. It's gonna be really casual. I've got my coffee. Everyone's got their beverage. Um, <laughs> ask us questions in the chat, please. If if you have any, and we're just going to have a conversation about what that's like, and you'll be able to learn something new, hopefully, here. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and do some introductions. Uh, like I said, my name is Kylie Berman Solo. I'm at the Bass Museum. I'm the education specialist there. Uh, my job is doing uh, presentations like this and tours and just educating the public about bass culture and bass history. Uh, the Bass Museum was founded in 1985, and we're the only Bass Museum outside of the Bass Country. So we're a little bit different than uh, Uskalachea, which you probably are more familiar with. That's probably what you're doing in your clubs, uh, but kind of the same mission. So anyways, welcome from, from Boise, and then shall pass it on. Thomas, you are next. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Kaixo Denori, eh, egun non estatu batuan, eh, arratzaldean Argentinan eta beno eh, Gabon Euskan Herrian ere. Eh, nire izena Tomas da eta Makatxingoa naiz. Makatxing eh, herri txiki bat da, eh, La Pampa provincian, Argentinan, eh, baina Buenos Aires en bizi naiz. Eh, nazio arteko harremanak ikasten dut Buenos Aires en eta, eta Euskara ikaslea naiz ere. E, nire herrian, makatxinen, e, Eusko Alkartasuna, e, Euskal Etxean e, hartzen dut parte, idazkari bezala, eta, bueno, e, hemen dik aurrera, ingelesez. E, well, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good um, evening. My name is Thomas, uh, or my name is Thomas. I always say Thomas <laughs> when I speak in English, but my name is Thomas. Uh, is the... Spanish version of Thomas. Um, I'm from Macachin. Macachin is a, a small town located in the center of Argentina in La Pampa province. But I'm living in Buenos Aires, which is the main city of Argentina. I'm studying foreign affairs there, and I'm also studying Euskera. Um, well, I'm a part of the Eusko Alcartasuna Basque Center in Macachin. Um, I'm the secretary of the general commission and well, I don't know what else. This is my, my presentation. That was complete. Yes. <laughs> the bilingual one as well. Who's next? I haven't, I haven't prepared a speech like uh, Tomas's. Um, <laughs> I'm Ines. I was born and raised in Tandil, Argentina. Um, this is a small town or city, I don't know how to call it, because it depends on on the listener. Some people consider it big, some people consider it small, so, so I don't know, it's up to you. Um, I'm an art teacher, I'm an English teacher, um, and uh, I also teach Basque at my Euskalicia. Uh, I've been doing that for seven years now, uh, so that's quite a way. All right. That's it? Alpha yes, Sina. and next. <laughs> mine, mine, it's short and sweet as usual. <laughs> to be controversial, controversial, since Ines, who is Euskara teacher, and I am a <laughs> member of an Euskal Day, 
And Tomás did it in Basque. I am not going to do it in Basque. <laughs> Either. <laughs> to earn enemies <laughs> in the Euskal Sal environment. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> My name is Alfonsina Lerano. I am a member of Euskal Saleac eh, Escuela de Lengua Baja de Buenos Aires, de Euskal Tegui de Buenos Aires. I am from Chivilcoy, Provincia de Buenos Aires, two hours from the city of Buenos Aires. And I moved to Buenos Aires to, to study art history. And, uh, and I stayed there. And I started uh, learning Basque in Euskal Salea and then became involved with the institution and ended up being uh, vice secretary of the institution. And well, now I'm in Vitoria Gasteiz. I am doing the PhD in history. And I got stuck here because of the situation. So <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you didn't already notice, we're joining from three different time zones. So I'm in Boise. It's 11 in the morning. Uh, Tomas and Inez are in Argentina. And then Alfonsino's in the Basque country. So we're doing the whole spread of <laughs> time zones here. So uh, that's why maybe the time is a little funky for you where you are. But all right, well, perfect, guys. Let's go ahead and, oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so I just quickly added this to give people some context where we're located if um, you didn't know. So if you can see my little mouse, I'm right here in Idaho. The Bass Diaspora in the United States, if you, um, if you didn't know, it's largely concentrated in these Western United States that's over here. I gotta move my little screen of us. I don't know. Oh, it's gonna suck. So uh, Idaho, Boise, if you're in the United States, there is this thing that they say that Boise is the largest um, population of bass outside of the Basque country. Very false, <laughs> not true. <laughs> However, we have a really high concentration of bass. There's probably 10, 15,000 um, bass descendants here. Uh, but uh, there's also plenty in Oregon, Nevada, California, Utah, uh, Colorado, all these states around us, as well as Florida and some of the states on the East Coast. But we're in Idaho, just over here in Boise. And then I also included a beautiful map of Argentina, because if you're from Idaho like I am. You probably don't know a lot about the geography of Argentina. <laughs> and so over here is Buenos Aires where, um, that's where your Uscalache is, right, Alfonsina? Mine, yes. Yours is, and then Tandil is over here where Inez is, and then I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, tomorrow. So you're over here. <laughs> but the over question is, where is Macachin? <laughs> There's no Macachin on there, so I'm just kinda <laughs> Over There's there. no map in the world with Macachin. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. That area, kind of. Yes, it's oh. between Santa Rosa and Lauken. Oh. The Pine Pampas. Yes, oh, it's, it's really in the close. middle. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. I really found myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were right. So, uh, just a little bit of context there. <laughs> Move right on. My computer does not like change. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about what uh, our Basque communities look like and how they're different. Um, I'm happy to kind of start with ours. Uh, so here in Boise, we, um, we have a kind of unusual setup as compared to a lot of the Basque communities in the United States. We have an area in Boise called the Basque Block, and mm -hmm. it's a block right in the middle of downtown that is just full of Basque businesses. We have restaurants, a little hotel or a little boarding house. We have the museum, we have a museum. Part of that is a historic boarding house um, that we keep to show people what that was like for uh, Basque immigrants when they were coming here. Uh, we have a Basque center and Uscalachea in the traditional sense. Um, and a lot of other things. Like I said, we have a really high concentration of Basque, but by no means the largest Basque diaspora. Uh, we have a couple big festivals. Um, we do a San Ignacio every year is kind of a big one. And then every five years we do a high Aldi. We were supposed to have a high Aldi this year, but as you can probably imagine, we are not. So the good news is, is you got one more year to come to Boise for high Aldi. It's going to be in 2021. It's gigantic. It's amazing. Um, and that's really our big festival of the year. Uh, we do have dance groups. We have several dance groups. Uh, the one in Boise is called the Uncaris. Um, they're a really robust group. They usually have, I think, 80 members or so from little cheekies all the way up to adults. And, and that's really popular. Um, let's see, what else do we do? We teach Uscada classes, um, beginner through advanced. 
Uh, I can't say it's super popular, but it's still it's still chugging along. Um, not something that people are doing a whole lot of here, but we try. And we also have uh, something called the Boise Ecostola, which is one of the only Basque, um, or it's the only Basque preschool in the US uh, outside of the Basque country. And they're teaching the little kids how to speak Basque from very early age. Um, but those are sort of the highlights of the Boise area anyways. So um, that's what we're doing. And the museum's always trying to do educational outreach and you know things like this to educate the public about any sort of Basque cultural history that is found interesting. So that's where this came from as well. So uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and pass that on. Tomas, do you want to tell us about your area? Uh, yes, I prepared a PowerPoint for that, but maybe Alfonsina or Ine want to go first or it doesn't matter, I can share the screen. They go for it, Tomas. <laughs> oh, go, go ahead if you want to. Hmm? Alfon? You, do you, you want don't to... want to go. <laughs> yeah, do you want to go first? <laughs> yes, go, go, I, I can, go first. I can do it. Yeah. I, okay, I okay. Can do it. okay. Perfect, uh, thank you. Well, uh, I represent Buenos Aires. <laughs> I don't, well, Buenos Aires itself has um, eight, I think eight Basque associations different from different times. The oldest one is Laura Bat from, I always heard, 1877. But there are many and they are very different. We, there is also a, a school that is not strict, strictly an Icastola, the um, Euskalechea school. Uh, and well, my, my Euskalechea uh, was created in 18, sorry, 1944 after the Civil War. And the, um, the mission, is to promote the Basque language, the Basque, the Basque and the and the, the the Basque language and culture. And well, we didn't have a place of our own until 2012. So we 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 have been in most of the other institutions. So right now we have like our own identity, but our identity is related to to Euskera. And well, the, we we have danced, uh, but mostly we we relate to the Basque language and culture. And um, well, you mentioned about the entire community. It's hard for me to describe the entire. Uh, as I told you, it was hard for me to describe the entire South America. Yeah, it, it is even harder to 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 explain Argentina itself, but the province of Buenos Aires and the city of Buenos Aires, because in the city of Buenos Aires, we are in the capital. And for example, in our Euskalechea, most of the members are not from Buenos Aires. We are most, most of, uh, of, of us are people that went to Buenos Aires to study. Went to, we went to university and ended up there. So many of us uh, came from towns in the Provincia de Buenos Aires or other, other places in Argentina and many people are related to the Euskalechea in their hometowns and ours in Buenos Aires. And well, uh, Buenos Aires is a big city, a uh, very cosmopolitan city. So we, we try to take, a, take advantage of that. Um, but it's also hard to compete with all of the cultural offer that Buenos Aires has. And I don't know specifically specifically our, our, about our bus center. Where I told you we, we we are we have a new a new building, but well, not not a building, <laughs> uh, but a kind of apartment. You you, you can say uh, we have 100 members, but they all do different activities. And uh, well, the the most important activity we have is the Uskara classes and Minsa practica. And we have online classes before it was indispensable. <laughs> so we didn't have to adapt. <laughs> and we have different, well, we gave conferences and uh, do exhibitions, book presentations, and our, our cinema is, is very popular. And we have workshops of Basque instruments, 
uh, whenever we have a teacher and we have a, a, a dance group and a curse, a curse, what is it? people singing. But, uh -huh. but, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what we do is, as we, we have a small place, other Scalicheas in Buenos Aires have big place and well, similar to what the uh, Ines and Tomás are going to describe, but we try to take the activity outside of Scalicea because we don't have enough space. So what we do is uh, activities on the streets, like uh, tricky poteo. You know, um, we go around in bars, play music and inviting people to join us. Um, Fantastic. Well, and <laughs> and we, we try to organize activities with other communities, for example, like the Scottish community or the, um, the, the, one, the one from Catalonia or Gallegos or other, uh, other communities, other immigrant communities. Awesome. To, to avoid our problems. space problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many Uskalacheak do you think are in like Buenos Aires? I, I was thinking about it because some, some might not be considered Uskalacheas. They are right. Basque associations, but other kinds. Okay. I, I counted eight. Uh, okay. Considering the, the the school and the a research center, and so. mm -hmm. uh, I, I won't remember all of the names right now. But the, the last yeah. time I I, I consider it, consider about it, there there, there were eight. So but quite maybe. A few. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so just, just in Buenos Aires. Yeah. But yeah, in, in she's the, speaking. The the thing is, she's speaking only the about the capital city, yes. not right. the province. Right. Because in the entire province, there is almost one Euskalechea for each town, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and yes. see here, that's really amazing because, you know, a big city will have a Basque Association and a Basque Club, and um, they may or may not have a physical building uh, to host them, but, you know, it's like one a city. Like, we don't, I don't think we have very many places that would host multiple Basque Clubs in the same, same city. Um, and some of them are really, really small, and some of them are pretty big, and yeah, it's interesting. It's a little bit different. But the thing about Buenos Aires is that every Euskalechea is related to a different um, moment in history of immigration, so that's why it's, uh, there, are, there are so many. Because the first one was only considered for Laura Gbat. It only included the Spanish side, so the the Iparral de Coscalechea, the, the, the French side, created another one, and then the people from Navarra created another one, and they, sure. they tried to unite, but they couldn't, and they created a school. Uh, well, and, and, and then the, during the civil, after the civil war, uh, new groups that didn't agree with the other ones created new ones, so it's very related to history. Yeah. Annie mentioned on the chat that there's, uh, just like as an example to compare for you guys, uh, in Idaho, we have been 1.7 million people in the state, but there's only four Uskalachayak in the entire state. So, uh, oh, yeah, and she's mentioning there's 10 Basque organizations. So Uskalachayak and Basque organizations, like, we do have, but um, a little bit different. I'm sorry, can you guys hear that? Yes. <laughs> I think somebody's hammering a roof right outside. Is that, is, is that a chalaparta? Yeah. Special effects. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Uh, uh, Tomas, or no you want to go? Yes, of course. Uh, let me share the screen. Oh, I ended up not showing pictures, sorry. <laughs> you can share if you want. Do, do you have, my, 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 do you want to? Maybe later, maybe later. Okay. Okay. I prepare a PowerPoint like a university <laughs> presentation. <laughs> I understood something different. Uh, <laughs> Can you see that? Yes? Okay. Uh, well, I prepared a PowerPoint to show you some pictures of my past center and about the activities we 
we do and the festivals or celebrations we organize. So what the first picture is a picture of the hotel. The, the hotel is the is a particularity we have in our basque center uh, because it's a basque center with a hotel and with restaurants and with some things that are very weird for a basque center but uh, well uh, this hotel was one of the main purpose why the basque center was founded my basque center eusko cartasuna was created in 1995 and uh, 1999 sorry i forgot it 1999 uh, for 59. a group of 59 yes sorry <laughs> 1959 for a group of Basque people and descendants that uh, they, they they wanted to to find a place where they can meet so they create uh, this Basque center and they create as well they uh, they founded this hotel uh, which was one of the first hotels in the in the town and in the zone area in the surrounding towns so this oh so uh this was one of the main purpose of the creation to host people because there was no other hotel in the place uh, well here in this picture uh you can see and you can check out all the the spaces that belong to the Basque Center. Uh, in colors, you can see the parts of the Basque Center and in black and white, you can see the private properties or other buildings. Uh, in front of the square, that is in the middle, in front of the square, there is a hotel, as I already mentioned you. And in the first floor of the, of the hotel, we have uh, one restaurant and one bar. Behind the, behind the hotel, we have a sports hall. This place is used for sport activities. Uh, we use it uh, for uh, special events like big events uh, with a lot of people because it's very big and it has a capacity for maybe 600 seat people. So it's very, it's very big. Uh, behind that, we have the trinquete for, for practice this sport. Uh, this Basque sport, the, the pilota. Uh, then we have uh, some kitchens and dining rooms that we use for small events or, to, or for, for rent to the partners. Then we have a hall or a room for dance and for Euskera activities. Then uh, we have a taverna, that is a place where the partners meet to drink something or to play moose or we organ where we organize the, the most uh, workshops. Uh, then we have a tennis uh, courtyards that you can see behind, uh, a swimming pool to practice swimming, to swim. And we have a paddle, uh, two, two paddle courts uh, to practice paddle. This paddle or paddle tennis, I don't know the difference between one and the other. And then we have a bochas hall. Bochas is a sport that I think is, it doesn't exist in the United States or in North America, but I'm, go, I'm going to explain it in a, in a few minutes. And the other part of our basket center is uh, this park. Uh, in this picture, you can see like, uh, like a recreational park. This is the recreational park of Eusko Cartasuna Basque Center. Uh, this uh, recreational park is used for uh, horse uh, race activities. Uh, it has a horse racing track uh, in the butt, as you can see, and then have two informal restaurants or dining rooms uh, that we use it for events, for special events. Then it has a, a forest to camp that we use for activities with the sports we have in our basket center. Uh, then it has a multi-purpose uh, room, multi-purpose uh, place to organize events. And then it has a field for horse activities as you can see in this picture. Uh, well, in the picture on the top, you can see the entrance of the recreational park. And in the picture below, you can see um, how we, we do when 
we have events in the recreational park. We always, we used to open the events with the horse parade, with the Argentinian and the Basque flag. Um, in my town that is located in the center of the countryside, in the center of, the, of Argentina and in the countryside zone, uh, the events with horses and some things like that are very popular because we live in a farm and uh, we organize these events that are not related with the Basque culture but uh, we organize it in a Basque place so we always use to open it with the Argentinian and the Basque flag to, to, to show the people that it's not a Basque activity but they are in a Basque territory. <laughs> Um, here you have some of the pictures of the field on the left and then the horse racing track on the right. I don't want to take my, much time. Those are some pictures of the dining rooms I mentioned you. Are very informal as you can see with shared tables uh, we used for events. Well, uh, this, is, this map shows us the distance between the town, as you can see, it's mm -hmm. a very small town <laughs> on the left, and then the, the recreational park I already mentioned you. Uh, there are like eight or nine kilometers away between the town and the, and the park and 13 minutes driving by car. So going back to Makachin, I'm going to to talk to you about the activities we have in the Basque Center specifically. Uh, the first one, and maybe the most important, is the, the dance. The Basque dancers uh, take, uh, take part in all the events we organize. And as you can see in the picture on the top, there is a dance hall or a dance room where the people um, where the people take classes. We have two professors of dance and then approximately 80 people dancing. Uh, and in the picture below, uh, you can see a demonstration in an event. Euskera, Euskera is an activity uh, important as well. Uh, we are on the course that uh, Alfon already mentioned, the, the online course. We use this course to give classes in Makatin, and we have uh, two professors of Euskera that give classes once a week for 15 students. Uh, they are, we, we split the, the group in different groups uh, depending on the age and depending on the level they have. Uh, but the, the ages are from 14 to 78 approximately. Then we have a taberna. taberna this place uh, is, uh, is a very good place to, to meet people, uh, to, to drink something and to play moose. That is, this is the, the main place where, where the people play moose. And we also organize work, uh, moose workshops, uh, I already mentioned you. Uh, those are the, the kitchens and the dining rooms we have in the basket center. We use this to to rent it or to organize small events. Here you have another picture of the kitchen. And then behind, uh, sorry, then uh, below you can see uh, the choco bar. That is the bar I mentioned you. This in the in the first floor of the hotel. This bar is a very good place to drink something and to eat uh, some pincho or some finger food related with the Basque gastronomy. Then we have the Bochas Hall. I put uh, petank or bowls because I, I think it doesn't exist in North America, but it's something like that. This is a very uh, popular sport here in La Pampa and in Argentina as well. And we have a Bochas Hall uh, where the, a lot of people take classes and play play game here, play this hey, game here. Hey Thomas, is this the same yes. as Bochas The same, uh, sorry? As bocce ball, that we play right. here, it's like a little tiny That's ball. It. Yes, yes. I don't know. To get really close yeah. to the tiny ball. I, I was, in English. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I was trying to find bochas in English, but but I, I couldn't. Don't, I the, the English ver, word is actually like a French word, maybe. I don't know. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yes, I, I think it's 
It's Italian, but uh, yes. Italian? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know the, okay. the origin. Okay, makes sense. Okay, carry on. Sorry. Then we have a trinquete to Euskal Pilota or to Bas Pilota. Um, in this place, uh, we have classes every every day, and about 80 people practice this sport, and we have 25 students of Euskal Pilota. Then we have a swimming pool, as you can see in the pictures. This uh, swimming pool is uh, is used only in summertime, but now we are trying to put a, a roof. Is it okay if I say a roof? Okay, to put a roof and to to use it um, all day all the year because there's no there's no other swimming pool with roof in the town, so it's going to be very useful. And um, the swimming pool, as I told you, is only used in summertime. Here, this uh, paddle or paddle tennis, I don't know the difference. Uh, the here uh, a lot of people practice this sport. Then we have the sports hall sorry what's going on okay uh, we have a sports hall this hall is a place where uh, people the partners can practice sports like volleyball basketball or cesto ball or some other sports and we always and we also use it for basque dances as well and for festivals as you can see in the pictures then we have the tennis courts to practice tennis. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we have uh, a restaurant. This restaurant, Iñaki restaurant, is a restaurant uh, when you can find uh, bas basic uh, food or maybe good dishes of Basque gastronomy. And this place is, is very nice. Uh, you, you can find a lot, of, a lot of dishes about the Basque and the Argentinian gastronomy. And then the hotel. This is the hotel uh, we have in the Basque Center. Uh, this hotel has 36 rooms uh, with a capacity of 90 people. Uh, this hotel is uh, it's it's big. It's bigger than the rest of in the in the town, and it's called Euskal Cartasuna, like the the Basque Center. Well, that's all. <laughs> Festival is. It's not the, this, this question. Tomas, is there anything that you don't have at your basket? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe now I would love to show pictures of mine. <laughs> yeah, I think he has a self-sustaining club that could just exist on its own. So I have to ask though, so your town is really small. Your bass club is very robust. I mean, my gosh, you have everything you could need. It's amazing. And I would think it's fair to say that you are very into your sports. You got that covered. Um, is that like the biggest attraction in your town? Is your town mostly Basque? Is like the whole community using all yes. this? Yes. Uh, community? Yes, or, like, almost. Yes. Uh, a lot of people in, in this town has a Basque surname or a relation with the culture or Basque ancestors. Maybe the 70% the of the people. Yeah, that is okay. too much. About uh, 630 uh, Basque people came to my town in, in, the, in the whole story of the town, in the whole uh -huh. history of the town. Uh, and I think it's, that is too, is too much because we are 5,500 uh, people living here currently. It's a small town and most people have, have a relation with the culture. So okay. yes, it's, it's important. So your bass club is like a big deal in this town, like it's the thing. Then. Yes, uh, this and, and this bass center uh, was founded with uh, other purposes, uh, maybe the as a sport uh, sport activities because right. the town. Um, that and... Yes, yes, yes. To, to maybe the, the tennis courtyards are the only one in the in the town. The paddle are right. uh, the paddle is the only one too. So. It, it, it has a lot of purposes than the bus culture sense. or the bus activities. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. That's amazing. Yes. Um, well, I think everybody who's listening right now has decided that they're going to come to your bus club and live there. So uh, <laughs> that, that was his idea. He wanted to sell the place. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
he's on there two or four, you know. Gosh. Yeah. And I also have the prices of the rooms if you want. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 just kidding. Cool. Um, okay, so just as a heads up, a little time check. We got about 20 minutes left, so um, 20, we can probably push that a little bit if we need to. So, Ines, do you want to tell us about your club? Uh, yes, I haven't prepared anything like this. Um, okay. I wanted to talk about this with our next slide. I think maybe we can go on. With your slides, Kaylee. Yes. This one, we have a very beautiful introduction that Alfon is going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you're not presenting your Basque Center first? After you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but do uh, you want me to introduce when did Basque come to your area and why? That is. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I'm, I'm going to talk about in the entire Argentine territory. But, but mostly about Buenos Aires. But uh, well, th there has been Basque in the Argentine territory since the colony, since the Spanish colony. But and they are a big part of the history of Argentina. And the city of Buenos Aires, for example, was was founded by Juan de Garay. And now the statue of him is next to the Casa Rosada, the pink house, the president's house, uh, next to a um, specimen sprout of the Guernica Cuarbola, of the tree of, of Guernica. So the vast immigration is, is, is important and, and it's, it's old in Argentina, but uh, it became massive during the 19th century, uh, mostly because of wars, different wars, uh, like the Carlistas wars, the uh, the, the Basque avoiding being rec recruited for this for the wars in Cuba, Filipinas, and that's by the end of the 19th century, that was the massive immigration per period in Argentina and also in the US. And, and that, that immigration is, is very similar. And the, the stereotype of the Basques being shepherds in, in the US, well, in, the, in, Ar in Argentina, the stereotype is that they are related to the dairy industry, uh, products related to milk. And um, well, as I, I, I said, the first Euskalechea was created in 1877 in the city of Buenos Aires. And then there, there was a, a new migration and exile during the Spanish Civil War. That's the very resumed history <laughs> of that migration. Just the highlights of the migration <laughs> the highlights. process. Well, in our case, uh, Tandil received uh, people during all those stages. So we can say that it was uh, a very large process, yes. And that is why our Basque community is very large. I mean, I'm a teacher and when I have a new group, the first thing I do is take the list, the students list, and see how many of them have uh, Basque last names, and they are a lot, always a lot. Um, and that is uh, related to what Alfon was saying. We live in a place where the countryside is huge and they mainly came to work. Yes, uh, in Tandil, Basque people are related to that, working in, in the countryside. Um, but although it's a very large community and there are a lot of people with Basque last names, um, our house, our club is not that big. I mean, our building, it's huge, not like Tomas's, but it's quite big. And we are, I don't know, 200 people. It's not that large. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures if you want me to. Uh, 
there. The first thing we are going to see is a, a map of Tandil. So you can see where we are located. Is that screen sharing working for you? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yes. Yep. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is uh, downtown. Yes. You can see a big square that is the main part of the city or the town. I don't know. Um, and there in red, you can see our club. Yes. Um, Tandil is a very green place. So we usually take advantage of that when we want to do something, some activities. Uh, we, are, we have a, a square in front of the house, so it's a, a good thing to have. And I'm going to show you now. This is our bus club. Um, it was born, our house, in 1949, yes, um, the November the 13th. We are having our anniversary. We don't know if we are going to celebrate it this year. Hopefully we will. Um, and well, as you can see, we, it's a very diverse community. I think that is one of our strengths. Um, we have children, we have teenagers, uh, we have, I don't know, people in the, their mid 40s we have the elderly participating as well so i think that is an advantage because you can have many many different activities uh with different people and also different points of view because when you have to do something for children it's not the same as preparing something for adults so i think that it's quite good um in this picture we were participating on a parade yes um, for one of, of our uh, celebrations, national celebrations. Um, if you have something to, to ask me, please tell me. Well, one of the things that we love is that our group of children is big. Uh, not all the Basque clubs have a big group and we always uh, say that this is important because they are the seeds and they will continue working and they will continue uh, sharing and improving and um, I don't know um, they they will be keeping these alive you know the, the Basque culture and the Basque traditions so that is why we are so proud of this of the, the children that take part this is, a, of course, a dance group because dancing is very, very important. Uh, I'm not a dancer myself, um, but well, I, I, I do many other things. The choir, we have a choir. Um, we are also proud of this because it's a way of combining um, Euskera with uh, like a leisure activity and as you can see we have uh, uh, the elderly here participating so it's a, a way of giving them uh, where to belong you know what I mean um, something to to do with their lives because they are happy when they go there and they share and nowadays that we cannot meet uh, they keep on doing it, you know, through Zoom and this kind of stuff. Uh, so it's a way of, of keeping that aflame uh, in their lives. Um, I'm sharing this picture with you because this man was very, very important, uh, not only in our Basque club, but also in the Argentinian Basque community. This is... Um, Isidro Legarreta. He is related to Euskera mainly, but also he created many, many enterprises and companies. Um, 
So when we lost him, he died four years ago. Uh, he was remembered by all the community because um, yes, all, all the things that he gave and he created and introduced in our country, you know, he, he was an exile. Um, he was a founder of uh, our Basque club. Um, that is why we, we love him. We, we keep on loving him <laughs> so much. Well, this is just a picture for you to see how big our house is, our club is. Uh, we have many different activities. Um, for example, this is a, a dinner, I think, San Fermin or something like that. Um, it's an advantage, as I've mentioned before, to have this building because we can do many different things at the same time. And we also can rent some of the rooms. So that is an extra income uh, because you know that, well, we, we discussed this when we were in Gastimundo, that our financial situations were very, very different. Uh, I mean, the USA and Argentina. Um, so we are always trying to see the way to, to fund our activities and to raise money because everything is very, very expensive here. And well, this picture, here we are at the cinema, yes, because one of the, the things that we do is collaborate and create different activities, or design different activities with other institutions. Because um, I think that our club has uh, gained uh, a place in the, in the city and that allows us to def define, yes, to, to do many activities with many different institutions and that is useful and also um, very nice because you can share um, and you can nurture yourself and of course give something to the community. So for example, here we are with um, Inca, that is a cinema, local cinema. And we, we have this cinema, we like to call it like that, uh, where we have Basque films, of course, um, every year. This year, we don't know if we're going to have it or not, but well, it's an activity that is we, we have been doing lately. And our strength, we have um, Trinquete as well. And here we have some children and some women. Yes, this is our strength as a, as a club um, because not all the, the Basque clubs in Argentina have this or have the possibility to focus on sports um especially with children and uh, women so i we are very proud of this and uh, i tried to make it short oh that was beautiful thank you um often seen i think you were going to answer a question is that uh, right yes uh well I would do it while I show my pictures or my Basque sensor is going to kill me if ever, everyone did and I didn't. <laughs> so, uh, Annie asked, they'll, they will know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are watching right now. I, 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 have, seen, I have seen them. <laughs> Let me see. uh, are you seeing? Uh, sure. uh, no. no. There it goes. Yet. Yes. Now? Yes. Okay, yeah. this is Calzaleac in Buenos Aires. As you see, the, the Eche Chiquilla Biotsandia, the house is small, but the heart is, is big. We, we have a Garnica co arbola sprout in, at the door, as many other bus centers. And the thing about the, the Euskalecheas in, in Buenos Aires and La Plata is that they are both uh, cities with universities, with big universities. So it's, it's common that, see, that students that came from like most of the other bus centers, the 
mostly Provincia de Buenos Aires or, or other places too, when they they go to to La Plata or Buenos Aires to study, they they join the that other. Uh, so it, it's like some some of those colleges work also to. They they work like they did, but to help I, I, uh, internal immigrants because of the because of studies. So that's very common that there are a lot of people from Necochea in La Plata, for example, and we have a lot of people from from Tandil, from Arrecifes in our Euskaliche in Buenos Aires. Those are towns in the province of Buenos Aires. This is our small town, and many many of these people are goes to the University of Buenos Aires. Some of them are even teachers at the University of Buenos Aires, and they came from a small town. This is how we we take the activities to the streets because we don't have enough enough space. And of course, as an Euskaltegi, which is our trademark, being a, a, a school of Basque language, the um, the Euskara Reneguna, the day of the Basque language, is our most important uh, party, different from another communities. We celebrate uh, Euskera. Uh, most than other other parties with uh, like school plays and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the tricky potato, what we do on the street at night. As we are downtown Buenos Aires, in a, near the old town, uh, where there are a lot of pubs and nightclubs, we, we walk around those places, play music and inviting people to join and drinking, of course. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> How do I stop sharing? Just press a stop. O overshare me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you have to. There we go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll get us back on our thing. So we only have a few minutes left. We might go over a little bit. Um, so if you need to go, feel free. But um, I think I might let this go another 10 or 15 minutes if that's okay with everyone, just because this is so interesting and there's so much to to say. And um, I think we have a few questions. Um, I had Annie ask, is it common in Argentina for people to be members of more than one Uscala that, that's that's what I was answer, answering. The, yeah, the, the internal immigration <laughs> immigration yeah. in Argentina. Yeah, right. So I don't. I'm not aware of that being very common here. So that's um, yeah, it's yeah. kind of interesting. I mean, Most something I'm really in. noticing is it seems like your guys is um, your clubs are really you know, you have like your strengths that is really strong. Maybe it's like dancing, like we dancing and taking care of the cheekies of the kids like that's really our strength and then I mean that varies from like club to club I mean Alfonsina's is mostly about language um Tomas is about I don't like, have cheekies yeah no cheekies right uh <laughs> Tomas is all about the sports <laughs> and everything that you could possibly need um and that's really interesting and it makes sense why you would be a part of multiple clubs because the clubs are fulfilling um different needs uh and not necessarily, you know, doing everything in your club, but really specializing in a few things. Um, that's really interesting. It's a little bit different and than uh, we do here. Also, because there are many activities that we carry on together, or there there are several programs that, in a way, force you to be in contact with mm -hmm. other Euskalicias. So you you create like a web like a connection with other Euskalicias without realizing. Right. Um, something else that came up is um, Simona, Simona Vasca. Are you guys having it? It was supposed to be this year, right? Are you Someone not knows. here? No. <laughs> What's going on? Give us okay. an update. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I got some pictures of what, as well. Mm. Do you have a presentation for the cancellation? <laughs> <laughs> I have a presentation for all. <laughs> oh my God. It's very student-like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. 
We should have done this for Gus and Mundo, and then we would actually. Uh, I understood it. something different. <laughs> no, this is perfect. This is this is perfect. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the festival or the the famous festivals we have in Argentina. First, the festivals, uh, the, the most important festival in Argentina is the Basque Week. And I'm going to show you some pictures of the last uh, Basque Week we have in, in my Basque Center. It was in 2015, like five years ago. And can you see the pictures? Wow. Yes? Okay. Uh, those pictures are... Uh, of the Basque week in 2015. That was the, the last Basque week we have in, in Makachin. So uh, the Basque weeks are the most important events, as I, as I told you, where a lot of people and a lot of Basque centers ca uh, came to, to the Basque center that host the, the festival to share three or maybe four days of uh, activities, uh, of meetings, uh, maybe uh, we we used to organize euskera dance, uh, pelota, uh, I don't know what else, but activities, a lot of activities, different. Uh, they used to start on Friday and to end on Sunday, uh, and in the last last week the, the last one was in Bahia Blanca the last year in 2019 and about maybe 30 Basque centers go to the went to the to the Basque week we have in Argentina 87 Basque centers I don't remember exactly maybe Alfon you you know or Ine I know we are half of those colleges in the world are in Argentina Yes, approximately <laughs> 80, 87, as I, as I, as I almost see. Almost 100. Let, let's, say, let's say almost 100. <laughs> okay, in, in, Euskalit, in Euskalitiak uh, are 87 or 89, I, I don't remember. So just to or diverge a little bit since you're talking about that, you guys have a ton of Euskalitiak, so let's say about 90. And then do you guys <laughs> know how big your Basque population is in Argentina? How many Basque people are there? I mean, it's hard to define that's, a Basque person, right? Are you that's a problem that? for, that's a big problem for his, for, for history um, yeah. investigation, for example, because in the, in the historical documents, they are, they are, they are, are they either appear as French or Spanish. So it is hard right. to, hard to, to identify. And the, the last name, uh, some people use last names to, to identify them, and it, it didn't work because sometimes the last name wasn't proper, properly identified, right. or or last name doesn't make you pass, or, or yeah. otherwise. Or they change Thomas, it. Thomas like and, and, and Matteo Fransoia would be <laughs> would, wouldn't be passing, and who would dare to say they are not? Yeah. And other thing yeah. is for for example that. Most of the Basque, uh, of, the, of the people from Basque ancestries in Argentina, is not in Euskadi, yes. Uh, right. For yes. example, th there was a Basque center in Roldan, that they, what they do, they wanted to create a Basque center a few years ago, and they took the guy, the, the phone guy, and selected all of the Basque names. But not, of, not all of the people that had Basque names related to that identity, and many people that didn't have, because of his grandmother was Bas or anything related mm -hmm. to that. So um, may maybe someone who, for example, in our Scalicea, people are interested in, in languages and came to study and they are not Basque at all. So it's hard to say. Yes, and, and without yeah, relation. It's a, it's a very yes. complicated question that there's no real answer for. Mm -hmm. um, in the chat, they're, they're saying that approximately 10% of Argentina is. Yes, yeah, that's what yes. I say. Okay. Yes, 26 it about. It's a lot. <laughs> yes, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And so the next time yeah. somebody comes in the museum thinking that Boise has the most bass outside of <laughs> the Basque country, I'm just going to tell them, well, 10% of Argentina is, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, wow, that's amazing. Okay, sorry to distract from that. I just wanted to. No, 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 that doesn't matter. Kind of bring that up really quick. Well, and here you have uh, other pictures of the, of the same Basque week in Makachin. 
Mm -hmm. Let me check because I have other pictures that relation it with my bus center. Uh, well, here you have the last bus weeks uh, we have in Argentina. Uh, Necochea was in 2016, San Nicolas was in 2017, um, Mar del Plata, the next, then Maya Blanca last year, and Macachin was uh, for this year, but uh, because of the coronavirus crisis, we have to, we, we were forced to cancel it and to put it next year. So the past week in, in my town uh, will be next year. I don't have the dates, but it's going to be next that year. Happened. So that happened with our high Aldi as well. We're going to be yes. here. Same, but, so it's same a little situation. bit different. I, it seems like your Basque week and our high Aldi festival is um, kind of similar in like scale. And, you know, it's this big couple day festival that has everything you can imagine. But um, so for you guys, though, you do it every year and then you just rotate cities mm -hmm. whereas in Boise we just do it once every five years in the same place and I mean other towns will host you know really big festivals but this one that we have is so it's a little bit different but um that's amazing do do people really travel to all these different towns every year to yes. do this yes wow. yes <laughs> many people money money at the beginning of the year yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> we save money all the year to do that mm-hmm I mean, how, what a and many, cool many people your communities connected by doing that and, you know, traveling it around every year. It's really amazing. And many people living in Misiones, maybe that is located in the north of Argentina or in Chubut, uh, has to drive like, I don't know, but maybe 2,000 kil kilometers to go to the bus week. That is too much. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a tiny little country. You can't just. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. And we and used then, to change. No, yes, then you're, you arrive to a town that, the, that doesn't have enough hotels to host everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's another problem we have. That's we another, have yes. We, we colonize a, a town for during a week with <laughs> Ikurinias and, and they. <laughs> Sometimes the, the, the hotels are not enough. Yes. <laughs> so we ended up camping or renting rooms to people. Yes. <laughs> that, that's the case in my, in my town. <laughs> wow. It's gosh. a good example for that. And we used to change the, the cities every year. Uh, for the next years, Tandil is in 20, I don't remember exactly, but in Ine, it? maybe you, you know. But Macatin is next year, then is Villa Maria in Cordoba, that is in the center of the country. Then is Tandil, I guess. No, Necochea and this, and, and then Tandil. Tandil. Yes. Yes, uh, yes we, we used to change the place to, to know new Basque, uh, Basque centers and just to change, <laughs> mm -hmm. to know something different. And here we have other uh, important events uh, of the Basque diaspora in Argentina. The picture number one is a picture of Necochea. This is uh, San Sebastian. It's a very popular uh, festival. The Euskaletea of Necochea organized every year on January. Yes. January. Uh, Number two is uh, Buenos Aires celebra al País Vasco. Al País Vasco. Uh, this is a Basque country celebrated by Buenos Aires. This uh, event is organized by the government of Buenos Aires and uh, Laura Gbad. A different, a different community is celebrated every week yes. in Buenos yes. Aires. Every, week, every weekend there is a different immigrant community celebrated in, near the, the, the the president's house, uh, the, the yes. most important part of Buenos Aires. They use two or three blocks and they organize the event over there. So as you can see, then picture number two is the, the Buenos Aires Celebrant País Vasco. Uh, number three is the Isiaberri Eguna in Cañuelas. In Cañuelas, Cañuelas is a city uh, located like a uh, hundred 100 kilometers away from Buenos Aires, from the city of Buenos Aires. Uh, 
Number four is the Udaleku in, Chas in Chascomus. <laughs> yes, Chascomus. Uh, the Udaleku is a uh, is activity the basket center of, of Chascomus organized for chickies or uh, young people. And they, they go to, to this city to spend like a week or uh, a weekend um, full of activities, euskera, dance, food, etc. Et and number five is the program that the Bisha Maria uh, Basket Center have that is called uh, Anima Saites. And this program is famous because uh, people from different parts of Euskal Maria come to Argentina to teach uh, euskera, dance, uh, gastronomy, or something like that. And Necochea also has the same program or something uh, similar that is called Atorona. And well, those are some examples of the most important activities or festivals that the diaspora in Argentina organize every year. So I think yeah. that's all, yes. Yeah, beautiful. Guys, um, we went over just a little bit and it looks like everybody who's been listening stayed with us. So um, <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> they could have left, but they didn't. So that means we must be at least kind of interesting. Um, I found this fascinating, though. I think um, really the big takeaway from, you know, us collaborating to do that is uh, no matter where you are in the United States, or if you're in Europe, or if you're in South America, or somewhere else, um, the Basque diaspora is a community, and we should not hesitate to call on each other to collaborate and to share um, our challenges and our strengths and our ideas. Um, we're all facing something we learned in Gaz de Mundo is we're all facing very similar challenges in the new times, but... Uh, we are all also able to collaborate and come up with solutions. And, you know, we can see from this that amazing things are happening really all over the world with this Basque community. And um, thank you guys very much for coming and, you know, collaborating with us. Uh, before we leave, does anybody in the chat, um, do you have any like burning questions that weren't answered that you would really like to uh, know? Pop it in the chat really quick. Um, yeah, if you like these types of presentations, uh, follow the Basque Museum on Facebook or go to our website because we're doing uh, right now we're doing these almost weekly. Um, but at least while we're not doing in person gatherings, we're going to have a lot of these online kind of collaborative presentations about different things. And, uh, you know, follow it. Oh, no, hold on, I got one question. Let me see really quick. Basque communities within the US. So, um, yeah, I don't have a presentation or anything prepared. We did get a question about Basque communities uh, within the U.S. outside of Boise. Um, just in a real general, you know, 30,000 view type of thing. Um, there's a lot of Basque communities that are in California and also in Nevada. Um, they operate similarly, but also different to uh, what we've been learning about in Argentina. Um, we have both clubs like Uskalachayak and we also have just organizations that are maybe operating outside of a club. So for example, in Boise, you have the museum, which is its own entity. You have the Bass Center, which is the Uskalachayak, which is its own entity. And then we also have like a dance group, which is its own thing. So it's, I mean, it's hard for me to summarize all these different um, communities in the States because they're all so they're all doing something different and it's a really wide variety. Um, some of them are very small, some of them are very large. Uh, San Francisco has a really big vast population um, and several clubs and a lot of these towns throughout California do as well. Elko, Mateo, um, he was in charge of the Reno, right? Reno uh, club. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything more specific you wanna know, I'll try to answer, but uh, the variety is wide, so it's hard to hard to say exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Uh, see, this is why I have Annie in the background. We will be doing a presentation in a couple weeks in August about North America through NABA, which is the North American Basque Organizations, and they're in charge of um, providing resources and connecting and collaborating all these different clubs. So if you do want to find out more information about 
specifically what's happening in North America, definitely go to that presentation because uh, we have the president of Navajo who will be presenting and um, giving us way more information. It might be really interesting from some of you joining from South America if you want to find out more about how it works up here. Um, that'll be a really interesting presentation. But uh, it'll be exactly like this, a Zoom thing. You just register and you can join. Um, if you joined late today, if there's something you missed, if you were distracted, fear not. This was all recorded and it's going to be up on YouTube so you can watch it whenever you feel like. <laughs> um, so there will be, it'll be there for you to see and to share. So if you missed it, no problem. Share it with your friends. Um, gosh, is there anything else, you guys? Do you have any closing remarks or anything you would like to point out? Well, we were curious about the Basque in America, too. Yes. <laughs> we were of very curious. That's when, another presentation. Uh, before, oh my gosh. <laughs> before Gastemundo. Before Gastemundo. So uh, I thank Gastemundo because we wouldn't have met you otherwise. <laughs> That's yeah, yes. that was this like this event is really a product of that Gastemundo program. So um, it was great that we were all able to connect and meet, and then almost a year later, we're still able to you know use those connections and help each other out. So thank you guys for for joining us today. Yes, you and all thank, you. Also, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Fantastic. Okay, yes, so if there's no further questions, then um, I think I will. I will say a good to everybody. Thank you. Uh, we'll keep in touch, everybody. Thank you all so much. It was very interesting. Bye -bye. Thank, you. Thank you so much.